company called Ooh. Kube Kitchen. And you just won another prize for saying it correctly. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, so every once in a while we like to have sponsors. So anybody else who wants to step into Kim's honorable feet and sponsor next month, please raise your hand and we will descend upon you. <laughs> but if you haven't put your business card in for one of these <clears throat> fabulous sort of things, look at this. I mean, if you have men in your life and they don't like a leather pot holder, they're crazy. And a coffee cup holder. Oh. You don't have to dispose of them any longer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. But we're here, really here, to listen to, to Corey on give forth on something. Winning the internet marketing game with great content because everybody knows. Repeat after me. Content, content is, is king, king, right? So he's going to lead us on that. So we do this every month. Um, one quick question. Who's new? Whoa. So, okay. Quickly yet shout out how you heard about us. I don't remember. Who else has a member? The union. The union. Oh, yes. The union. Anyone else? Corian. My friend Jan Fischler. Jan. Corian. Okay. Great. Yes. I saw Corian in El Dorado Hill. Yeah. Well, of course, El Dorado Hill, because that's so close. <laughs> <laughs> and I drove. And you drove. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. So our, our group keeps growing. We're fine here for now, but we might need to get a bigger spot. If anybody has any really great ideas, let us know. And if anybody has any wins from working through this group, internet wins, marketing wins, Anybody got something to say? And we want to open that up to also challenges. Oh, yeah. So if you have a question about your internet marketing, if you'd like to ask the group, we've got a lot of people here that know a lot about it. So anyone, please raise your hand with a win a or a challenge you want. Jan. Um, I have a question, and maybe Cheryl knows the answer, but I just got um, a Facebook request from you to like your like your Facebook page, and I've been getting a lot of those. Yes, how does that happen? And so <laughs> how do you do that? Because my Facebook page needs liking, and I, <laughs> my business one, and I don't know how to, I don't know how to do that, so. It's a button that says invite friends. No, but it comes up, no, no, no she's talking like about something different. Message. It's a nice little package that comes right in your, in your uh, Facebook, and it's a little square, and it says, Please like Jan Fischler's whatever. Uh -huh. You know, like and people are doing difference. it. I'm going. How are they doing it? Yeah. I know the invite friends. That's okay. a pain. Yeah. This is different. <coughs> Cheryl knows. Uh, well, actually, um, this will segue to what my challenge is. Um, I'm going to get this <laughs> Please get right into it. <laughs> 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 Speaking of Facebook, and this was my challenge that I was going to throw out to you. Uh, I'm starting a. Uh, new e-commerce business which is uh, going to be vegan dog biscuits and um, it turns out that um, you uh, uh, can make fudge and fruitcake in your kitchen and sell it on the streets but you can't do dog biscuits. It's regulated by the California Department of Public Health. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, uh, so my challenge Government is that, and, um, uh, I need a commercial kitchen and that means rent, but I've looked at several commercial kitchens, so if you happen to know of any, um, let me know, um, because it has to be made in commercial kitchen. And also, I did start a Facebook page, and I wanted to ask all of you to like it, which is I Della's, did. I did, Della's Pet Bakery. And I will say, um, all I did with inviting my friends is um, invite friends, like Corey on set. There wasn't to my knowledge, any special um, box. Now, inside uh, the admin panel on my fan page of Della's Pet Bakery, uh, it says that you can invite people, and that's a little extra step, and I think that's where the box comes in. But um, when, when, you, when you open up your fa um, fan page or your business page, and it walks you through step one, step two, and, and then the next step is, is invite your friends, it pops up all your friends list. So I just went through and checked it. That's all I did. Now there's another option once your page is set up, and that is on the admin panel. I think maybe that's where that nice little box comes in. But I'm not aware of it. But she, she might know. You want this box? No, no, no. When you, when you, when the invite friends pops up and say you have a thousand friends and you have to check each box, yes. is there an easier way? No, no. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't control 
Right. Oh, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. They can't select all. Yeah. Okay. They select all, but it never selects it all. That's yeah. right. And, and then it will drop it, too, because I've tried to highlight all of them and then found out that they dropped once at the top row. And it, it, it is a process. It is a process. Okay. So. Bottom line. But Della's Pet Bakery, Facebook Live, and if you happen to know Commercial Kitchens, I'm working on a new success story, so stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> oh, I've got, I've got samples, too. <laughs> so who has, I've got, okay, I've got one theory about this. I just oh. realized there's a promote page button. I bet it is sponsored advertising through Facebook. But as you these know, are not paid for. You did not pay no. for it. So that's I think that invite friends, because I've gone through the... Admin panel, it's the same invite yeah. friends. We obviously so we'll need a whole class yeah. on this. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook changes, so yes. it's yeah. really yeah. tough to keep up. I just wanted to make a real quick suggestion of something that just happened uh, to a friend of mine regarding anybody that's starting a new business, even if you think that it's local, but if it ever is the possibility of going beyond local, Trademarking the name is so essential. I had a friend that actually started a local business. It had a lot of potential. She was really rolling. And she started telling me about it. And she said, I'm you know, having a logo design. And I've talked to a writer and have a website design. It was in motion. I said, oh, that's great. So have you searched the name? She said, oh, yeah, I searched, you know, blah, 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 dot com. And I said, no, that's not searching the name. I said, go to, so write this down, USPTO.gov. US, USPTO. So U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Um, you can do your own search for free to see if the name is being used or not. And that's the very first place you should look, even if you think the product is only going to be local. It could grow huge. So I think I probably saved her tens of thousands of dollars because she did search it. It was being used. She even approached the owner who was in Portland. The owner was not willing to sell it. So she could have developed the logo, the website, everything, and then had to have a cease and desist. Okay. So really, really good information. Thank you. Who has a seat open by them? Over here. Please, those who are, you know. I have a chair over here for someone. And I'd, I'd like to have a special <coughs> shout out to Brenda. Yeah. Yay! Surprise <laughs> guest who started this group in when, Brenda? Uh, 2010. Thank you. We now are at 313 or something members, which is unbelievably good. So that's great. We just are here to learn. And what else am I missing? Susie, can I just make a comment? If you're going yes, to go and trademark, I recommend you get an attorney. Um, people have tried trademarking on the website themselves, and have not done it correctly, and it's been challenged. So I would recommend, as a business coach here, make sure you get an attorney to do the filing. It doesn't cost that much. Kimberly? Uh, I find my own patent and found that the search and the patent process was $5,000, but they wanted to charge me when it only cost $125 um, in the actual um, submission fee. So check into whether or not you're capable of doing it yourself before paying the $5,000. Okay. These are all really good hints. This is what makes our businesses run. Yeah, yes. a quick hint about the Facebook like. If you are logged in as your business page or community page and you go to like somebody, that like doesn't count towards their likes. Only if you are logged in as your actual as persona. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. One. One thing. Speaking of Facebook, um, we NCO has a Facebook page, and there's also a Facebook group that we have, and we'd like to urge everybody to join the group um, because that's where more interaction is, and there's more, um, we'll get more benefit from that. that that's the one we really kind of keep up to date. This, wait, let me ask. Does anybody ever go to our Facebook page, the group? Okay. Can, next time, can we see triple that amount of hands? <laughs> <laughs> How do we find it? I'm um, going to tell you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. The um, we, is there a, a pen for that grease board or no? No. And okay. Actually, there's oh an easier God. way to do it. If we just, because we talked about this before, and I just go to Nevada site. County online on the right hand side, <laughs> click on the Facebook site. logo. Mm -hmm. That goes back to our group. Okay. The group page. So Nevada Thank County you. online. Okay. Can you just clarify the difference between the group page and the the two different ones? The page page. <laughs> We're not using the page page. Uh, it's one that 
if we could take down, we probably would. Got it, okay. Uh, the group is a group of people asking questions and interacting. And the page page doesn't allow you to do that? Uh, I'm not an admin on the page page, so Brenda, you may still be. Uh, I'll look sure. into that. Yeah, so we're not using it anymore, so if we could just take it down, because it's Nevada County Business Strategy Online Strategies Group for okay. that page. Do you want to just put, you know, we're no longer here, find us over, and link back yeah, to, sure. the, to the group? Yeah, the minimum. Okay. okay. And then how do we distinguish that we're on the group page? So what does it say for the group page? Uh, it's called Nevada County Online. Okay, and NCO, and yeah. it's a group. Okay. They're both. The big difference that you'll see is in the group, you'll see a bunch of members' pictures yes, okay. across the banner, right. the and then the other one you really don't. It's yeah. Just the... uh, yeah, so okay. we'd like you guys to be there so that we can, you can ask a question. Like, I, I found Cheryl, I, I had like, oh gosh, who am I going to get for this thing? And then all of a sudden Cheryl popped up and went, oh yeah, Cheryl, duh. So I just messaged her right away, and the deed was done. So that's a win. But that's when we're engaged with each other. When we're not engaged, we don't get those things. Um, there was a, an email sent out on um, from... Marsha. Oh, I'm jumping ahead. I do that. Yes, you do. <laughs> There's an email sent out from the meetup oh. email. <laughs> that had the link to the group. So look for that if you're signed up through Meetup. And uh, the, the, the URL is too long to give you. I mean, we'll just email it out again. And just remember to go to Facebook. You'll find it. I have a question. What's the Wi-Fi connection here? I tried it. It didn't work. So I'm going off my laptop. But it's uh, the password's 12345, 12345. OK. Is it so Courtyard Suites, Valley, Courtyard Suites or, Suites or Verizon Droid? Uh, Corian Suites. Okay. Rise and Droids one. Okay. <laughs> so you could use Corian Suites. Yeah. <laughs> Marcia, you had you emailed the group something, right? What um, was that? Can I you please remind us. I offered to do a perk for the group. Do a perk. Okay. What does that mean? Do we, any of us know what that means? Do a perk. <laughs> No, see, we're all like dogs. Yeah. So, could you help us out here? Well, it, how did you find it? Says it says on the page, would you like to offer a perk? And so, you can offer a perk. I was going to offer $20 off your first massage at a low human touch massage. Um, and you guys didn't accept it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if anybody wants a discount on their massage, give us a call. In general, we and how do they reach you? Perks. We've been um, doing sponsors. Okay, okay, so okay. there's a wave of people <coughs> that come in. New people in general. We just say. Okay, so sponsored. Maybe we somehow take that off. Who knows? You can't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So instead of perks, perhaps a sponsorship. Okay. Anything else? Oh. And now, the man in purple, <laughs> the man in purple who got his tie at a very special place, who's going to tell us about content. Go, Mr. Corian. Hello, hello. So, Machen, can you give me a, uh, say, 10 minute warning? Yes. Do you want to get the Hello, everyone. It's great to see a packed room. Uh, I have a couple questions for you guys before I start things. Um, this is about content marketing and showing your expertise, finding the communities where people are interested in what you do, what you provide. So my first question is, how many people here own a business or are working like in a key role in a business? Great, what I expected. Uh, how many of you have a website? Good. How many of you have a blog on your website? That's impressive. How many of you take your blog content and get it out to social media like Facebook, Twitter, etc.? Excellent. Okay, good. So the difference between teaching a class like this, say, five years ago, would be everybody would say they had a business. Maybe half would say they had a website. And then you'd have a few people perhaps blogging. And things have really changed. We're not going to primetime TV anymore to get our information. We are going online. We are finding blogs and experts and people that are peers to learn from. And that's what this presentation is about, is taking your business 
from being a business to being a leader and having an opinion and finding the people that are interested in the types of things that you do and your expertise. So, first of all, I want to go through some basics of internet marketing because everything we're talking about with content marketing is based on other forms of internet marketing, like SEO, search engine optimization, social media, we've talked about that or already seen that a lot of people are involved there, email marketing. We had a presentation last month that was really informative on how you can take your content and use that as part of your email marketing and develop those relationships. Videos. Yeah. Sorry, Karen. I had a question about Karen Rice. Yes. Do we supply the emails or do they have the emails they supply by demographic? For email marketing, in general, you're building your own list. There are options to buy lists. They don't really work very well. Uh, right. So it's really a matter of creating an opt-in. And I will get to that if I have a chance later on. Uh, as far as video goes, let me go back to that. <coughs> How many people are putting videos onto their website? Okay. This is the kind of thing that if we come back and do this presentation and ask that question again in two years, we'll likely see twice as many hands because video marketing is really growing and the technology to create pretty good quality video is getting much more accessible. And are there any uh, seats still available? If you raise your hand if there's an open chair near you. Okay, we got one in the back, so who wants to come in? Paid search. I know a lot about paid search because my company, Batteries for Less, spends a lot of money in Google AdWords, and it's frustrating because you have to pay a lot to be able to make a customer. And there's a lot more options. To go, uh, and one thing I forgot to mention, have a persuasive website. If you drive traffic to your website and it isn't very easy to use, it doesn't have the benefits of what you do and what's special about your business, it doesn't have clear calls to action that convert a visitor into a customer, you're going to have a hard time building your business online. I want to go through my basic steps for SEO, search engine optimization, because that's how I came to content marketing. Things have really changed with search marketing in the last year or so. A lot of the easy to use techniques that have been around for a while, Google's just gotten smarter. Google's figured it out that if you go pay a virtual assistant to go build you hundreds and hundreds of links to show your website's important, it's much easier for Google now to filter those out and actually count as a negative factor. So search engine optimization has a few basic steps. First, start with keyword research. Keyword research is like old-fashioned market research. You're looking into your audience, into your market, finding out the exact ways that they're searching for your business. By learning those specific questions people are asking, those phrases that people are using, allows you to drive your content and know that you're going to have landing pages and content related to that. And our method, and something that's worked great for my company, is really pretty simple. Do competitor research. Take one of those target keywords, put it into Google, and find out who's on the top of Google search results, and why. What are they doing for their content, for their website design, for their presentation? <clears throat> what are they saying for them, their benefit statements? What makes them special? And how do they take a visitor and persuade them they should do something? What are their calls to action? I've learned so much about so many different markets for businesses by going through that process and really scooping up that information and I have a few people in this room that I've worked with, Terry is probably one of my most recent, that you saw a lot of things in your market that she wasn't aware of before. So we found out, for example, her product is called Terial Magic. It's a spray you put onto flowers to make, you can do it for any kind of fabric, but her primary thing she's been talking about is making fabric flowers. And we found out that a lot of the competitors had very good tutorials about how to make a fabric flower, how to do these things. So that's one of our plans for content, to say, all right, the audience is out there looking for how do you actually make a fabric flower? And that's her specialty. She not only can show you how to make it, but make it faster and more durable. From there, look back at your website to find out what you can do to make it better. Your competitors have shown you so much for their copywriting or their design principles. And I understand the small businesses here 
we don't have unlimited budgets to build an Amazon-like website. But there can be so many hints and things that you can do that, you know, with a WordPress website and some basic design skills, you can go out there and do for your website. And it's about landing pages as well. Can anybody tell me what a landing page is? Come on, I know. It's the subpages. Say again? Subpages that come up. Your home page could be your landing page. Mm -hmm. Well, it could be, yeah. 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 Whatever page someone lands on. <laughs> By the way, that's exactly right. Or what you provide a link to. It doesn't even have to be necessarily, but most of your pages are going to have, like for example, search results. You may not have any links to a page within your website. If somebody Googles it and finds that page in the search results, that's going to be a landing page. It is any page that somebody comes to from another website. So specifically for Google, you create pages based on a focused set of keywords on your keyword research. So your homepage can't do all the heavy lifting. It's a matter of creating specific designed pages that go after those keywords. And you may need many of them if you have a big market, or you may need just a few if you have a small market. And I know I saw Kim, you nodding, you're an e-commerce website, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use a landing page. Uh, basically, they're just um, WordPress post pages that I can change quickly. Mm -hmm. I can put a picture and some specific information. And that will be something that I've been talking about on Facebook. And they'll be linked to that landing page. And then from there, they can go and click on the product and buy it on the product page. Uh, I just try not to go deep so they don't have to click too many times. But if I'm trying to get one thing out, like the biggest question is, how do you care for our products? <clears throat> I will throw that on Facebook occasionally and say, hey, your customers are wanting to be customers. Did you know these are washable? And I usually only have to say that. And then the landing page can explain it more. It just goes right there super fast. And then they go, yes, I want to buy it. And then it goes to shopping. That's how I use Wow, it. you should be teaching the next presentation. <laughs> That's a lot of tripping up to learn that. <laughs> it was just, you put a lot of content in there. So, th yeah. Did you see what she said? It was a matter of creating a focus page that then she ties into her social media because she's answering questions that then take somebody from getting their question answered to here's how you buy it. Not too many clicks, though. Yeah. And you don't want to go like 10 clicks in. Okay. Two clicks, like, oh, I get it, and where do I buy? That's right. Yeah. So yeah. clear benefit statement, call to action. Well said. And finally, it's a matter of entering the Google Popularity Contest. Creating landing pages isn't enough. It's a matter of showing that they're important and people are using them and sharing them. Go for heat. Uh, perhaps. And we have had this happen before. Yeah. But Matt's not here. Matt's the guy. No, uh, yeah, and I think that... The last time it wasn't overheated. Gosh, darn it. Uh, well, I'll let that go. Okay, so... Put your laptop up on the uh, I was going to say... Yeah, laptop's, the, laptop yeah the laptop's not going to work. Uh, Meishi, can you perhaps see if there's any tech support from the office that could deal with getting that? Can you put your laptop on the center there? We can all... <coughs> certainly can. I can read it. We're not that far. Laptop. Okay. Thank God for a small room. Yeah. And don't move to that slide yet. You had popularity, <coughs> Google popularity there. Yeah, so okay. uh, we'll <coughs> move on. So, popularity for your website is about incoming links as well as social shares and social interaction. If you think about it from Google's point of view, you can go find a page that's been very well optimized with the right keywords in the title, the right content, a good layout, good information. But unless it's getting links from relevant websites, it really doesn't matter that much. So a key part of content marketing and how I came to it was because you have to be out there. You have to create content people actually will be interested in. And it's all focused for me around Google, the very small gorilla here that should be a giant gorilla on the screen. <laughs> because for me, Google is the 800 pound gorilla in the room. It is the largest search engine by far. So I know social media marketing can be really challenging and tough to take a visitor and actually get them to buy something. <clears throat> On the other hand, with Google, it's very focused traffic. 
tends to be people that have already qualified themselves because they're looking for your content. And Google is saying, ah, you want to know how to care for a Kubey kitchen product or how to make a fabric flower, here's a page that explains that. And then from there, you tend to get people that get involved with your site. And it's really important getting the votes that matter. Uh, as I said, Google is getting smarter all the time. So relevant, natural looking, earned, that's, a, that's, a that's the elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the gorilla. I started out today by trying to find a chicken that was missing. So I thought that was going to be the weirdest thing that happened. Um, so in general, work to get your website out there. And again, it's about your content. And I should take a moment to explain who I am. Uh, I own a company called BatteriesForLess.com, moved up from Los Angeles to Grass Valley in 2004, and I learned there that number one rankings on competitive keywords is the core of our marketing strategy. And there are certain keywords. It's got to be one of those carts, the housekeeping cart. Right? I just hope they keep going back and forth. It's not distracting at all. <laughs> So we learned that getting to the top of Google was a way that we could just consistently get free traffic that was looking for us, that was ready to become customers. And that's, again, why I've gone out there and started teaching classes and developed a consulting business based on search engine optimization. It really works, and it can guide a lot of your other marketing efforts. So let's talk about content marketing. Content marketing <coughs> is audience-focused could be from keyword research. You know the types of things that your audience is interested in. Could be from your insights into your business. Could be looking at other websites or blogs or social sites and find out what the tenor and topics of conversation are. Communication. It's as basic as that. You're working to create an interaction with your audience. Answer their questions, show them good content, show that you've got something that they want to be interested in. It's about branding. This may be a dangerous question, because there's a lot to it. Can anybody give me a concise description of branding? Yes? Promise of an experience. Promise of an experience. OK, let's get another concise phrase. Identifying product with a name. Yes. Who you are. Who you are, yes. Identifying a logo to, a branding a logo to your website, just yes. like you have on yours. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your story. Mm -hmm. Consistency. Very good. Very good. What was that again? Consistency. Consistency. Oh, okay. So the way that I describe branding is I think of the Nike logo. And I go from there to go, everything about this multifaceted, multinational, multi-million, probably babillion, dollar company, comes down to just do it. That's darn good branding. Three words that you have an experience that you can think about, that it's being outside, it's being athletic, using their products. Not everyone here is going to have a brand as crystal clear as that, but that's one of your goals with your content marketing, is work to have it tie in to all your other forms of branding that you're doing. Relevant and valuable. Yeah? A comment I was just wanting to make about branding is when you attach the three different ways in which people learn, visual, kinesthetic, and auditory. So you see an image, you hear a phrase, and you see, um, and you relate them to each other or something that you, you can feel, mm -hmm. that sticks in people's minds. And they have to see it repetitively, at least seven times. That was a lot there, and I'm not sure if anybody in the back of the room could hear that. Uh, I want to be able to move on. But the basic idea is having your branding tied into what you say, what you show, and how you interact with customers. And your market. It doesn't even have to be customers. Okay, so relevant and valuable. If you create content that people are interested in, that's not been duplicated a thousand times already on the web, it's going to be relevant and therefore valuable and worth sharing. Informative and interactive. So if you have something that really 
does get to the core of a problem or shows a specific niche of something you do and you know about, it's going to be informative and people will flock to that. Content marketing isn't selling. Just imagine how big that selling would be up there. <laughs> <laughs> really big. <laughs> but it's a key element. And let's try this again. Yeah, let's just see, turning it off, turning on. It doesn't look like it's even. There's a little red light. Oh, yeah, there it goes. I see the light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the world. Okay. Yeah. Good. At least that hopefully means the bulb isn't bad. Lower's coming on. It's coming on. 16 seconds. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there, oh, coming. So I'm going to keep moving on for time's sake. I want to make sure that people are looking at content marketing. It takes time. And that's one thing I want to make sure that people are clear. But it ends up simplifying all of your marketing because you start out with good content. Then you find out the places to distribute and get that out there. So content marketing. Your goals. Educate and entertain. I've learned this from, from doing videos and going out and doing speaking and, and working to be an authority in my field. I like standing out because I try to be entertaining and having good, have a good time with it. I see many other places that are experts. They are beyond the things that I know how to do. But it's dry and hard to understand and be accessible. So consider that within your voice to be entertaining. Have something people are really going to be interested in. It's link bait for SEO. Link bait simply means if you put good content on your site and you work to promote it a bit, people are willing to link to it. So perhaps that's in another blog where somebody puts a link to an article you wrote. Perhaps it's another website that has a link of resources and expert websites. Can I see? Yes. Does it matter where the links go if you're linking back? Like, should it be part of your blog, or could you have like just a, a widget on the side of a WordPress site that has favorite links? Does it so you mean links from your website to other websites? Yeah, or when people link to you, is it so? To one your... or the other? Okay, so I have both. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does matter. <laughs> Build trust and relationships. So you're working. I'll get back to that question, but you gave me a snarky answer, I'll give you a look back. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's about linking to your website, and let's make sure that we're focused for SEO. It's not about linking from your website. You can do that any way that contextually fits your site. When it's a matter of linking to your website, you get links not only to your home page, but to specific pages on your site, specifically landing pages that you're working to get higher into the search results. Over time, you're building trust in relationships, you're answering questions, and building trust again. Sorry, I did this late last night to get the last parts of this in. Overall, your goal is to generate traffic and have that lead to sales. And one other key part of this that I should mention kind of ties into it, is the goal of having the appearance that you're really out there and you're producing good content. I know for one of the websites I'll be highlighting in a moment for FindingHappiness.com, we really want to make sure we have a history of good quality blog posts, for example, with interaction, so that when we start going for our client and working to get radio shows, or TV coverage, or more prominent website links, they can look at our blog and say, oh, these guys have been at it for a while. I see that there's good content, not just in this post, but in the content marketing. Who's your audience? I learned this phrase in the internet marketing conference, and I love it. It's always the way I simplify looking at my audience online. Fish where the fish are. So if you're going for swordfish, you're not going to go into one of the Nevada County lakes or ponds. You're going to go to the ocean, to a place where you know they're going to be. If you're looking for people that are interested in making scrap fabric projects, you want to go to websites that focus on that interest, enthusiasts. So think about that. It's not a matter of broadcasting generally to the internet. It is finding specifically the niches that you provide and the information you're going to go to those specific sites. Brainstorm interesting topics. And I will get into a lot of specifics on this, but if you sit down, 
with your customers, with some of your staff, with your friends, and think about all of the things that you know about to be a specialist in your business, you'll be astounded at how long that list is. And it's really going to overlap the ways that people may be searching for you online. Keyword research I mentioned, but I can't emphasize it enough. It is a simple way to find out more about your market and adapt that to your content marketing. And survey customers. There's a lot to be said for once you're in this process, putting out a survey, people really like being asked questions and answering. I have found with multiple clients, when you ask a simple question about maybe something you're planning for your business or the way to look at something, people really interact with that and you get a lot of good information from it as well. And surveys, by the way, can be as easy as a Facebook page survey. It can be sent out through your email marketing. There are many social listening tools. How many people here use Google Alerts in some way for social listening? Oh, that's a place where you have an opportunity. Google Alerts allows you to get email updates based on a specific keyword phrase. So again, Terry, if you don't mind, I'm going to keep using your, <laughs> your business as an example. We may be setting up keywords in Google Alerts, for example, for uh, scrap fabric crafts. We know that's exactly the kind of person that we want to reach. So therefore, we'll get an email coming in from Google saying, hey, by the way, this blog just mentioned that phrase. This blog, this news website mentioned that phrase. It's a way that you can be able to find the places that Google's finding, as well as be, have an early crack at interacting, making a comment, saying, ah, I liked what you're talking about for different options for scrap fabric crafts. Have you considered making a scrap fabric bag or a scrap fabric flower? There's many things that her product can be used for, and therefore she can go out there and say, ha, I got there quick, to say, take a look at our tutorial. Remember the content marketing we were talking about? Hey, here's a link to my tutorial that will show you exactly how to do it. This article from eConsultancy, which is a website I really like, goes through many more examples. It's 19 tools for social listening. Uh, too, not enough time to go through them all. In general, I work with the business to look at the blog as a hub of your content. And just like Kim mentioned for Cuvée, a lot of times a blog post can then be morphed into a landing page pretty easily. You can take the same content, rewrite it, put it as a landing page. But in general, if you're putting good content on a regular basis on your blog, that's something that shows that you're involved, you're active in the market, and furthermore will give you the content and the snippets that you can put out to multiple social networks. Yes? How important is it to allow comments on a blog? Pretty important. For a blog, pretty important. But, depends on your market, I recommend having a tool, if you have a WordPress blog, that will allow you to filter that. Askamet is one that, that we use. Uh, you want to make sure that things are on topic, and, and if it seems to be abused, then maybe consider taking it away. But, but that helps, it's important as far as SEO and all of that, of allowing comments? Somewhat, yes. Google will see if a page gets consistent comments and interaction, especially if it really starts building, yes, Google will definitely value that. What was the tool you used? What was the tool? Askimet. Askimet? And Evelyn, that's still our preferred, right? You, well, you can use that. That's a charged one. Um, there's also, people can just do like free uh, spam filter plugin for WordPress, and mm -hmm. there's you know, there's a few of those you can try. Sometimes it depends on your blog, and you can start out with a free one, and if you start getting hit, then you can take other action. But sometimes it takes a while before you get found by spammers, so you kind of just play with it. <laughs> yeah, set it up for moderation so it doesn't automatically go out to mm -hmm. comment. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I got a comment on my site from a representative company called Checker, and they're one of the largest in the nation. That's how they contacted me that they want my product. They want to distribute my product. Yes. So yeah, it was huge for me because they didn't email me. They went in and commented on my website because they got a, my address, I guess. Shows the evolution of communication where, you know, it would have been a letter 20 years ago, it would have been an email 15 years ago. Now it might be a Facebook message or a comment. It's meeting the audience where they're comfortable. 
Yes. So I'm um, um, selling a product online. I have started a journal or a blog, and as I'm developing my website, which I'm having someone help me with, um, I'm having to make decisions about how to create it, whether or not I'm emphasizing the product, or are, are, am I doing a product or am I doing a blog? Because in, in some people's minds, you're doing one or the other, and doing both hasn't, in my mind at least, become an easy way. How do I say this? I'm not sure how to communicate in the creation of the website what my priority is between blogging and product. Does that I have to sense? wait on answering that or addressing that just for time's sake. Okay. And ideally, it'll be covered a little bit with what we're getting into. Okay, great. <clears throat> okay. So not only is it a matter of um, having your content, but also look at distributing. Again, because I want to get into some hands-on examples to show you what the core of this presentation is going to be around editorial calendar. I'm only going to go through this brief, briefly. Blogger outreach, find people that are in your field, relevant websites. Comment on their blog, interact with them, spend some time building the relationship before you come out of the gate saying, hey, could you link to me? Because it might take really showing that you're interested in taking the time. Answer questions in forums. Uh, there's many, ones that, many forums that are both niche as well as larger ones like Yahoo Answers or Quora.com. Uh, post your blog RSS into blog, excuse me, RSS directories. These are places that allow people to search from a variety of blogs and essentially subscribe to the content. Press releases have worked really well for many of our clients. It's a matter of having something that's actually press worthy, but then putting it into a press release format, which tends to be just the facts and fairly dry. Hi, you in the other room. <laughs> Can you do a goldfish impression for us? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good content. <laughs> Social media. Uh, get everything you're going to be doing with your, your blog. Look at the right messaging in the right place. So for Twitter, maybe you want to have a snippet of your blog, break it down into 15 posts over a week. On Facebook, perhaps it's two or three posts that are not quite as bite-sized as Twitter. I wanted to make a quick point for those of you that are not writers, that you don't have to necessarily create all of your content. You can curate content. And for me, the first thing that came to mind was Pinterest. This is a board from my Pinterest with infographics, examples of getting a concept across with an informational graphic. They're really popular. People really share them. This is a place I created none of these infographics, but I'm showing through Pinterest my judgment, my eye for detail, and the things that I like. And furthermore, this could be a Facebook post, or a tweet, or even a blog, where I say, hey, I'm getting into infographic <coughs> marketing. I'm thinking about some topics. Here's my process for doing that. And furthermore, here's some of the ones that I really like. And uh, if you have a chance, check out my Pinterest board, because there's a great one from REI talking about good content. Zombie survival gear. <laughs> they have an infographic going through specifically what you need from REI to survive the zombie apocalypse. That's good content. <laughs> I want to take a moment going through a specific examples from a website my company just built. And I want to thank Evelyn, who coincidentally is also wearing purple, which is, we have a lot of purple going around in our company. Evelyn built this website based on our marketing process, our SEO process. So let me go there and walk you through what makes it special as far as content first. Now I like pointing out this is one of the first places. Jonathan Robinson is an author, a speaker, a presenter on happiness topics. He specializes in giving people very quick, actionable tools, thought processes, that you can use to make yourself happier. So what's a question you could ask yourself? What's a way to think about a bad thing that can make it a positive? We did keyword research around, of course, because that's where we started, and we found out that not only people are looking for how to find happiness, they were also looking for how to be happy, key to happiness. 
these are keywords. This is exactly the way people are searching. And I love demonstrating this because how to find <coughs> happiness and how to be happy. That could essentially be the same article, right? Fortunately for him, well, for us, he's a great writer and he made very distinct, different content. So if somebody comes into one of them, they're going to get a good message about how to be happy. And somebody who's looking for finding happiness, they're going to get a different message. These are keyword landing pages. Furthermore, a core part of this site is the blog. Our goal is content marketing as the core of his business because he's really an expert and we've got the advantage, again, that he's a really good writer. So we've worked with him to develop topics that he's going to be releasing over time and then having that tied into social media for the distribution as well. This is an example of a recent one called How to Be Filled with Energy. If we scroll down this page a bit, I will be getting to this one in a moment. He did a blog post for International Day of Happiness. And you may be asking yourself, what are all these awareness days anyway? And who in the world cares about them? <laughs> it's a reason to talk to your market. And surprisingly, we got more comments and interactions than we did on most blogs on his post about the International Day of Happiness. I just had to throw out how people know. I was talking to a web developer in Romania a few days ago. Somehow mentioned this website. We were talking about it. Finding Happiness Eagles. Oh, did you know tomorrow's the International Day of Happiness? <laughs> so, so people do know. I, I go, oh, how do you know? So yeah, people know. When is it? Yeah. When is it? Uh, it was Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to notice something else, that talking about the way options you have for formatting a blog, we're working to make this blog read kind of like a magazine. There's a lot of content there, but it's broken up with images that evoke the message behind it. So remember, when we're talking about content, it can be video content, it can be a written piece, it can be a song, it can be anything that you have that you can put together. If you're doing a blog, make sure you have images as well. Let's go back to the presentation. So uh, I'm just curious, yeah. um, so you built the blog around his business model. Is it a product or service-based business model, or he's, both? He, both. He's a speaker, okay. so he provides that as a service. His primary product is a set of happiness tools. It's called okay. Deeper Happiness, and it's a paid product. And then, as per many things with content marketing, there's a lot of free content. So our goal is to give a lot away, build the trust over time, build the email list over time, and then from there, not only offer this one product, but offer additional products over time. Yeah. Can you give a definition of what, when you have your internet site, I mean your website, and then you have the blog linked to it, uh, what is a simple definition of what should go on the website as opposed to what goes on the blog, so it's not redundant? Is that a good question or even good for right terrible, now? Terrible, terrible question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard one. Uh, yeah, but I want you to make it simple. There's not necessarily a clear line that's going to work for every business. Okay. That's first thing. Secondly, you're going to have a set of core landing pages on a well-designed SEO website that are static and really focused on those core Like keywords. your service or your product, right? Yeah, and the variations on that. The one thing I know from working with lots of businesses, we'll come up with a huge list of landing pages and keywords, and then we'll narrow it down to primary set and a secondary set, because even then you're going to have a hard time creating all those landing pages. For a blog, that's what we're, let me get into details about the, the blog topics, and that will illustrate okay. the question. The tool that I want to share with everyone here today is called an editorial calendar. I did research on this starting about a year or so ago to look at how people were managing and organizing this content production. Because we've gone from content consumers to producers. And I know that for magazines and newspapers, an editorial calendar is a key to making sure there's a flow to the news and that you're aware of the events that happen through the year. Let me start out with the first step, which starts with ideas. Now this is taken from Jonathan Robinson's website. Uh, this is an edited version of our working file. 
I want to read you through a few of the examples that are here for topics. The placebo effect and happiness, which by the way, actually works. <laughs> How less can lead to more happiness? So is it about money or is it about fulfillment? How music can make you happy? Is there different ways people learn and experience the world? How to turn failure into success? I know a bit about that. It's fun to fail because you learn from it, but you can definitely make it into more success. The power of nudges and good habits. Why people at Burning Man are so happy. <laughs> that was their intention when they went there. <laughs> this is a brainstorm list. Not everything on this list is necessarily going to make it into a blog post or a tweet or a Facebook post. But this is where you start, is you brainstorm. Next, I have this zoomed in to make sure that people can see it, especially wouldn't be seen on my screen at all. Can everybody see the words on the screen here? Okay. The challenge is that this spreadsheet goes quite a bit to the left, but the basic idea is look at the calendar year for your business and think about what events or things are special within your calendar year or your market. So the template I'm using here starts out with some basic <coughs> holidays or events that happen. But for example, one of the things in here is Martin Seligman's birthday. This is an obscure one. Does anybody know who Martin Seligman is? Learned Optimism. Say again? Learned Optimism. Learned Optimism. He started a branch of psychology called Positive Psychology, which is around being happy and using tools to be happy. It is the key place that Jonathan Robinson's education and experience are coming from. So I'm sure in August, it would be very logical to do a blog post about Martin Seligman's birthday to both build awareness who this guy is and this branch of psychology, but also it's a reason for talking to people. This is what you're creating, are reasons to create content. In a way, you're kind of manufacturing this. So, for example, if I would, ah, 4th of July, that's a good one. I want to do a topic on happiness related to 4th of July. Give me some ideas. What's something that would... Pyromania. Pyromania. <laughs> Party. You don't, like you're saying. Personal Excellent. independence. Personal independence. Excellent. Family celebrations. Family celebration. That's great. Spend time with the family. Do you see where I'm going with this? If you spend some time thinking through the brainstorming, you now have a whole list of top possible things you can talk about. Now you create a list of all of the things through the year that may be important to your audience. And one thing I want to do really quickly is So I found this page on Wikipedia as I was first getting into uh, editorial calendars. It's Wikipedia, first of all, which means it's pretty darn comprehensive. And remember that I'm loading this off my phone, so it's taking a bit. But awareness days, weeks, and months. If you want to start out with a brainstorm for your business, look through this and ask yourself what things may be relevant. Uh, so, <laughs> Nick says, go to September. Oh, it's not on there. You've got to edit it. Oh, no, there it is. They remember September. Thank God. <laughs> Suicide Awareness Day, Dating Day, World Contraception Day. <laughs> <laughs> you have to edit Wikipedia. Nineteenth is talk about the pirate day. See, they're in reverse order. Pirate day. I mean, pirate day. Oh. <laughs> I know. I did not know. Uh, or in the how about this? I'll, I'll pick something on topic. You're missing it. World Mental Health Day. What did I miss, Brent? September. If you twist it around, World Conception Day, then it's a dating day, then it's suicide. <laughs> 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 so, suicide day should go last. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to edit Wikipedia on that one, too. Contraception <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you guys are seeing the process here, though, right? This is something that you can do to start figuring out what is important to your market. So if you're selling candy, it's going to be around Valentine's Day. 
and maybe Easter and March Christmas. Day. If you're selling things related to happiness, maybe it's around December when people get really bummed out because they're not with their family. I hear all sorts of things that suicide rates go up higher in December. I guess people are getting ready for it in September. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Fill this out. Next. Look at the different types of content that you can create. Examples. Blog post. An email. Press release. A video. Newsletter. Create an infographic. Article. I saw a list, by the way, getting ready for updating my PowerPoint on this, that said the types of content that you can create for your website, and it was <clears throat> like 50 different things on this list. This is a slight list, but remember, there are different ways you can express yourself. So if you find out it's easy for you to point a camera at yourself and just create a quick video, do it. Not hard to do at all. From there, I'm not going to go through all of the specifics that are in this spreadsheet, but looking at content type, who is going to write it, is it a high priority or a low priority, when is the content due? That's a challenging one for a small business. You are working to create structure for yourself in many cases to meet your goals. So having a content due date and a drop date, once you start filling out, I'm going to do a blog post about Martin Seligman's birthday. Okay. I know that the content due date better darn well be before that birthday, and then the drop date can't be a week afterwards. It has to be on time. Overall, you're working to say, when you go to write your next blog post, and let me ask this question. How many of you have set a goal to write a blog post for yourself, gotten in front of the computer, and just went, what am I going to write about? Right? It's not uncommon. With this tool, that will not happen because you will have many options and you'll be able to be flexible as well. If you see that something's changing around, that you're going to release a blog post about depression in December, but something really important happens that bumps it, fine, look for the next available time that you can release that. You don't want to necessarily push Martin Seligman's birthday back too much. All right, all right. Why can't we get this calendar? I will provide a link to, it's on my website, uh, I'll provide a link at the end of the presentation. Target market, especially if you have multiple niches within your business, think about that. For example, with Jonathan, one of his niches is he's done a lot of continuing education for accountants, CPAs. The content that you tell a CPA is not the same content that you might tell a lawyer or the general public. It's going to be focused, saying, Tax day is coming. Are you stressed out? Here's something you can do to be a little happy. Right? So consider your target market. What's the call to action? Not, you don't want to be salesy, but consider if you have something that's content on your site that can link there or maybe sign up for your email newsletter, consider that. Oops. Images, references, and comments. So overall, again, this, once it's filled out, is really meant as a guide so that when you go to write that blog, you've got references of two to three other websites that have written about the topic, things that you can weave into your blog writing. You have comments saying, ah, you know, I'm not sure about International Suicide Day because it's dangerous to be too downer about it. Maybe if I could tell a story of redemption that a family had a suicide and they got closer together. This, by the way, is all off the cuff. <laughs> Finally, okay, let me get back to start. This is meant, okay, thank you. And I did this in a different spreadsheet, it looks like it dropped off my months. If you notice up here, there should be a month header that I must have deleted by accident or got dropped off. You see, this is supposed to be January, February, March. Seventh is the first Monday of the week. So what this is looking at is planning your content for the next month. For example, you may say, ah, we've got a blog post on uh, why people of Burning Man are so happy. How is that going to interact with, are there going to be forums or bloggers that we want to reach out to? 
Are we going to put something into our email for that? Is it going to be a YouTube video? Are we going to do anything on Pinterest? Etc. Etc. This is meant as a a la carte menu of social media choices so that you can start planning things out a little bit ahead of time so you know if I'm going to do a substantial blog post, say 800 words on a topic, maybe for the two weeks going up to that blog post, I put a few tweets out there as teasers. Start asking some of the questions perhaps that the blog post answers. <clears throat> Putting it out on Facebook. Looking for maybe the month ahead of time going to blogs or forums that have related topics and working to build up your prestige a little bit. Ask some questions so that you can go back to them when the blog is published and say, hey, you guys know me because I've been answering questions and interacting. You guys might want to check out this blog on my website because it is targeted to you. All right. Uh, a few other things I'll go down and mention on here. It keeps going. <laughs> if you're sophisticated enough in your business to do public relations, PR, publicity work, and I'm curious, who here does some kind of publicity PR for their business? That's more than I expected. I mean, cool. outside of social media? Outside of social media. Okay. Actually like getting a magazine or a radio or... Print, TV, radio, whatever it might be. Uh, for example, Hiring a publicist, having somebody that has that Rolodex of different numbers. Just curious about that. So are you doing any special events? I've been told by many publicists that doing a special event for your business, sharing something, having a meet and greet, but giving something of value is a really good way to bring in people and bring in their friends as well as tie it into social media. I can attest to that. A What's lot. your experience? Uh, I give free drawing workshops, and it's how I, I have been getting um, a handful of customers every single time. Um, yeah, so I give special events that are free. I serve wine. Have a good time. I talk, about my, I talk about my, uh, my product, and I give them a free drawing lesson, and awesome. they sign up. I know that we're covering up a lot of stuff at this content marketing presentation today. But is this churning anything up in you guys? Are you guys inspired to go out there and, and start broadcasting what you do well, whether it's through an event, whether it's through content, and then tie it together? Advertising. Research. So again, you might be doing customer surveys or trade shows. Sorry if this is small for folks. And again, this, this template is available for you guys as a download. Uh, let's go back to the wrap-up, the big finale. Now, specifically with finding happiness, we set goals for ourselves. We wanted to, I'm going to take it from the goals I set in general, educate and entertain. Project Jonathan's whimsical, knowledgeable, fun voice so that people know if they spend that hundred bucks on his product, that they're going to get their value. They already know him a little bit. They know the things that make him appealing. We want to build audience and website traffic. Integrated marketing. This term is out there a lot, and I'm not sure how many people know what it means. Simply said, make all your marketing channels play nice together. Find efficiencies <coughs> wherever you can, that if you are going to write a blog post, you can post, and that in turn gives you ideas for your Facebook, your Twitter, or your LinkedIn, great. You don't have to go to each of those individually and figure out what you want to say. <coughs> Website, email, social media. For example, how many people do an email newsletter? How many of you that just raise your hand for an email newsletter tie your blog topics into your email newsletter? Okay, so about half there. That's an easy way that you can take this content marketing, go from a blog, rewrite it, <coughs> maybe shrink it down a little bit for an email newsletter, but then say, hey, come back to my website to read the whole thing. Create and share great content. I've used great a bunch of times in this presentation. I want to make it clear. Set your goals high. Don't produce crap. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny doing the research on this. There are quite a few people that that's the articles people are putting out there related to content marketing is going, watch out for the wave of crap coming. So I don't want to be part of that. I want to encourage you to really work through the system of knowing your audience, knowing your market, 
answering questions, and create something that's actually valuable. You're not going to be able to do that every time, so don't get down on yourself and set your goals high. Branding. There's a lot of branding that we want going on with Jonathan's website, so whether it's the color scheme, or the logo, or his topics. And always for me, I'm thinking about search engine optimization. How do I create content that gets into the Google popularity contest and shows that there's a footprint there, there's something that really makes this website important or special? We just launched FindingHappiness.com two months ago. Yeah, I can't remember the date. Already from Evelyn doing this work, we got a piece on Inspire Me Today, where Jonathan was made a featured mentor, guru, I don't remember the term they used. Inspire Luminary. Luminary. <laughs> Luminary. <laughs> Luminary. He got great traction. People really interacted with him on somebody else's website, and that tied in to his website and SEO goals. Uh, and some of the specific keywords are going after there, like finding happiness, how to be happy. And you can just simply look through our site, finding happiness, to find out more about that. Big picture. <coughs> you want to create focus in your marketing so you're not getting into that situation where you're like, I know I should post on Facebook today, but what the hell am I going to say? You'll have an idea saying, okay, I've now got a tool I can look through that brainstorm idea and maybe do a quick extra research on one of these topics, like how people are happy at Burning Man. That's a, that's a very interesting one that might take a few minutes to say, let's just be creative. Let's just show people on a giant swing and say, hey, it's touching your childhood again. Target market. Be specific with your messaging, knowing who are the people you're trying to reach. Plan your content. And I didn't have the time to go into it in this presentation, but do measurement. So for example, after Inspire Me Today, we jumped onto analytics a week later to see how much traffic we got, how long they spent on the site, whether they signed up for the email newsletter, whether they took any other actions that we could say, okay, let's do more like this. And overall, my goal with this presentation, hope I hit this, is take this complex world of choices and simplify it to do some work now, but make it easier for you to do your social media marketing that you know you gotta do but having a way that you can go back, figure out what those topics are going to be, who you're reaching, and what you want to say. Okay. So, this is me getting overwhelmed with making this PowerPoint presentation, going, oh my god, there's so much information out there, how do I figure this out? Or it could be me figuring out the content to do on my website. So don't get overwhelmed by the choices. Simplify your marketing. Finally, three last points. As Susie mentioned, content is king. Having something that's informative, relevant, educational, that's content. And it can be many different types of content. Blogging, video, web pages, emails, so much. A lot out there. Distribution is queen. Work to get your voice out there. If you have the best blog in the world, and you really have great content, and you don't tie it into other blogs, other websites, forums, Facebook, social media, where your market is playing, where the fish are, are living for you to fish, that's your goal, is to get that out there over time. And finally, SEO is your ace in the hole. You're working to get traffic to your website. You're working to get interaction with the right people. But if this all ties into getting more and better rankings on Google, it's a known quantity, it's easy to track, and really frankly, you're going to bring in people who have never heard of your business ever before, they're simply trusting Google, getting that stamp of approval, and saying, okay, this is a website that's relevant for how to be happy, or finding happiness. And finally, the... Uh, copy of the website template or the editorial calendar template is available at corion.com forward slash NCO. The presentation itself is also linked there, so you can go find it. I think I came in under time. Uh, we've got time for, let's say, three questions or comments.
<laughs> yeah. I just have a quick comment to add to what Corian was saying. We're all busy small business owners launching our companies and just in the thick of things and sometimes we just don't have time to write, be, be very consistent about writing our own blog post. I'm going to share a little dirty secret with you in the industry and, and it's, not too, it's not talked about too often because it's like people don't like to admit to this, but there is um, an industry called PLA, it stands for Private Label Articles. And they're, le they're legitimate companies, and what they do, they're like ghost writers. So you have a topic, a specific industry that you have a niche in, they can write the articles for you, you can go in and customize them, you can put your own content, add your own content to it, but it's to help, I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of different companies, you gotta have to sift through them and see which ones resonate with you and that work for your specific industry. But um, there, there's quite a few of them out there. So if you just Google PLA, private label articles, they're like ghost writers for your specific blog. And like I said, you can customize it and make it to work your, you know, with what you're trying to put out there. I've used uh, content writers before, ghost writers, copywriters. There's a website I use called writeraccess.com. Mm -hmm. I've not even heard the term PLA. PLA, Thanks, private label articles. Great. Just Google it. Two more Just a quick question about Pinterest. Yes. That's comparatively new to me anyway. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been able to see where that would fit in to our business because I just see a lot of cutesy pie crafts and things people bake and cook and you know what's going on over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I teach a class on that, an entire class. Really? Uh, the summary from that, and by the way, the PowerPoint presentation is available on slideshare.net forward slash Corian for both this one and other ones I've taught. It shows your personality. It ties in easily into other forms of social media marketing. So it doesn't take that much time to do. And the demographics are pretty stunning. So it tends to be more female, higher education, higher income, and there's a lot of case studies out there of websites that are putting, doing contests or promotions or simply putting out their products or the things they're interested in. They're getting real website traffic that's converting. Main thing is it can be easy, can tie into other social media marketing pretty, pretty simple. Thank you. Yes? I just want to do a little commercial based on what, what Brenda said for my daughter who is a college student and a writing major. So she is starting her own business, writing content for people like you. Just tell her what you want. She'll do the research. She'll write it. And it will have correct grammar because she's somewhat of a grammar Nazi. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing about these PLAs. They edit everything for you. They just they just have extremely high standards. And you know, the She'll also grammar. edit something that you wrote to make you not yeah. look like an idiot. <laughs> All right, so there's a lot of new people here today, particularly. I'd love to get your feedback about this presentation, things that you liked about it, but in particular, things that you'd like me to put more focus into. This is the first time I've done this presentation. So if you have a moment, uh, just, I, I don't want to necessarily hand them out for time's sake. Well, I guess I can hand out some of them. Ah, screw it. Uh, on the, the table there, my business cards as well as the presentation. Thank you, Nevada County Online. This has been a great.